Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Autumn Season 2024 Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about um, what I feel is relevant for this season of Yu-Gi-Oh! And this will be a new series, obviously, that, and I will cover Yu-Gi-Oh! by the seasons. So my opinions and my takes will be on what is available and studying really through my own eyes, what I feel will be effective within the seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. Obviously, going forward, we have Molchami Fuelos coming in out in Rage of Abyss. This is going to be a card that will revolutionize Yu-Gi-Oh! and push it to the next step, to the next eventual conclusion. With that in mind, the cards that I see on anyway moving forward that's going to be really good is different dimension ground, especially with Triple Tactics Thrust. Allow me to explain. So going forward, potentially, especially in the competitive scene, fuel loss is going to be a staple. That's without a doubt, no matter what price it's going to be. So Triple Tactics Thrust, after they activate fuel loss into different dimension ground, to me is just a simple turn skip. I like the word free. Do you know why? It means I can do silly things for no reason. It's just so easy, so brainless, and especially with the fact that Triple Tactics Thrust has now been reprinted again in the Mega Tins, it is now fully accessible, it is at a price point that is now reasonable, and overall, they're going to be fantastic to counter fuel loss, in my opinion, and any sort of strategies that have that spam a lot of monsters in going second. So that's my hot take in all of this. Okay, let's uh, move on to some other uh, takes I have for the format in this autumn season. And so the other takes I have is these three cards, Kurikara Divine Carnet, Dominus Purge, and Dominus Impulse. First, first let's talk about Kurikara Divine Carnet. I feel as we go forward into the season and also and obviously into the pre next seasons and the seasons after, Kurikara is going to be a much better card moving forward. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! as I've now noticed, loads of decks play on the opponent's turn. Loads of cards or loads of effects keep activating on your turn. And I think like Nibiru is just not going to be the best solution going forward. While yes, I do agree that uh, Nibiru does stop combo decks, but part of the issue with that is Nibiru tributes all monsters on the field and, and you lose resources. The, you as a player who's using it going second, you've lost resources, you've lost the board. And that's going to be a bit devastating, especially with one card combos being a thing going forward, it is just not ideal. This is where Kurikara Divine Carnet comes in. While yes, it is slow in the sense that you can't use it during either player's turn, but when you're going second, it demands attention. Because one of the reasons why I like Kurikara Divine Carnet as I've played it more and more and more, especially with the effects being absolutely insane now in Yu-Gi-Oh, is that you can bait out some cards, Kurikara goes through, and at your end phase, you are guaranteed, uh, yes, guaranteed to grab one of those cards that you tributed from your opponent and they'll come to you to the end phase. Another thing you've got to realize is that Kurikara, when it tributes a card, it's at 3,000 attack points. That's a lot of attack points for a level one to have. And it's not exactly easy to get over. Remember, you will have other, uh, if whatever strategy you're playing, you will have other cards on the board here. Uh, with whatever strategy or archetype you're playing in your deck. So you don't only have a 3,000 attack point guy, you will also have the disruption your opponent ha had on their turn in your end phase and your own disruption that you've made with your board. It's a two for one steal. This is why I like Kurikara so much and, I've, and I personally feel going forward, there's a, I would say a strong argument for this card to be an include in your side deck it's just really great, really, really fantastic. The other uh, thing I would say is Dominus Purge. Now, I like Dominus Purge for the fact, let's forget the fact that you can activate this card in your hand. 
that to me is not important. What's important is you can use this as a normal trap. It's just a good trap card, okay? Just so for that alone, same with Dominus Impulse. The effects on these cards are just good in general, right? And this is why I feel these cards, these are the sort of cards that are not going to go out of style, similar to Infinite Impermanence or whatever. And I think now their price, obviously, I think with Impulse, it's a bit expensive now when Ridge of Abyss, but I think it's going to dip and I feel players aren't going to play it um, as much as Fuel Loss. I feel in TCG, Fuel Loss is going to have the initial, as I say, uh, interest and people will look to those more. But I would say a strong argument, I would say, is for to include these cards in your deck and... Personally, I've got myself Purge. I'm going to get myself Impulse. I am not going to get myself Fuel Loss. I believe, uh, for my, in my eyes, I feel, believe a better investment would be on Kurikara, which is quite cheap right now, Purge and Impulse, which getting a playset of all these three cards is much cheaper than getting Fuel Loss. Uh, in my in my eyes, anyway, and there's just there's more things you can be doing with Kurikara, Purge, and Impulse, as these cards, when they're on the field, are always gonna be live, always gonna be active. You can activate them as normal traps. Yes, they have the bonus as well of activating them from the hand, obviously, but the fact that we can use these cards as normal traps cannot be understated. This is these are really good cards, and so that's why, like, I really feel these are gonna be good cards moving forward and that's how i see it let's move over to the next topic i'll talk about okay and so here comes some of my takes as well i really like shared ride especially and mistaken arrest i feel like shared ride should be something that we we should consider moving forward loads of decks right now in Yu-Gi-Oh add a lot like they add significant amount this is now becoming a common thing this is no longer something that is you know obscure anymore and in my eyes shared right needs to be considered to be in your side deck as well the truth you need to know as a potential staple there um because it seems to be like this seems to be something that every deck is doing now similar to di different dimension ground I feel this is now is the new cornerstone of where Yu-Gi-Oh is going, where every card uses the graveyard, needs the graveyard, and every deck is adding. And so this is why I feel Shared Ride, not only is it a great card to just bait out and negate, but with the way, with the speed of how the game is going, with the way things are going as well, it's just, it's great. It's great. I mean, your, your opponent wasting a negate on Shared Ride is pretty good but again it's another one of those cards that you have to consider is will always result will always net you a card i wouldn't say this like you know from 2016 onwards but the way Yu Gi Oh is now can you name any deck that doesn't add tons of cards from their deck to their hand that's right you can't every deck adds cards now and they add quite a bit and as we move forward, like it's gonna be more so. Look at Raziel that's coming out at the end of the year, they add tons of cards. How about um, Azamina adds tons of cards. Yubel adds tons of cards. Every single deck in the game, right? Right now in the competitive scene, even whether it's a low tier deck or a high tier deck, just adds cards. This is why I feel Shared Ride is a considerable is a great card to have. Another thing as well, especially in your side, another another card in the side I feel is Mistaken Arrest. I think this is a card that's being slept on, but like Droll and Lock, but should also be considered. While Droll, like, it's good to have an insurance in my eyes and it's good to have both these cards. I think Mistaken Arrest is going to be more and more powerful as Yu-Gi-Oh continues on with this speed heist as we're going with faster and faster speed, adding is gonna be more. And so another good thing about Mistaken Arrest is it stops also the Malchami cards from resolving as well. So let's say you activate, they activate Malchami Perelia. Uh, you can activate Mistaken Arrest in response if you have it set or, you know, whatever. And 
the thing is it like it can lessen that damage so it's quite good yes you as you as you obviously can't draw cards but i feel like it's pretty negligible if you're stopping one of those Molchami cards another card i will say is fantastic going forward is different than is dimensional barrier let me paint you like a realistic scenario going forward say uh with fewer loss comes out obviously in the next few weeks now and your side deck is thrust different dimension ground and dimensional barrier do you know what this means well this means that you cover 100 percent of the metagame in Yu-Gi-Oh! facts in fact i've labbed this out and i've realized that every single deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now needs the graveyard and and the obscure ones like tempai use an extra uh, use a form of extra deck mechanic except links obviously now while that co that covers like 90 to 90 percent the 10 percent are those obscure cards obscure decks like let's say malice or things like that but here's the thing shared ride covers that too as those decks will add you see where i'm going with this and if they're going to be making silly boards, as every deck does nowadays, then the Kurikara that I just mentioned before, you can use that going second and do that. And the best thing about Kurikara Divine Carnage, you don't get to break your board, as but you will break your opponent's board. And the best thing about Kurikara as well is that it pairs with your hand traps and with your board breakers as we have going forward. The more I start to look at these uh, cards and the more I start to look at this lineup, the more it starts to please me. Kurikara looks really good going second. So does Shared Ride and so does Thrust. I think in all of this, one thing I've noticed, the standout card that's really standing out, especially this format and formats going forward is Triple Tactics Thrust. This card, is looking very sexy right now in terms of being able to just counter the Molchami cards. Being able to just say, okay, thrust into different dimension grounds, turn skip my opponent is really, really powerful in my eyes. And I think should not be ignored if you're going forward. Um, it's just really, really good, especially. And we look at, and as I said before, that's really attractive to know that you can just put in all your in your side deck, put in three thrust, one dimensional ground, one D barrier, and a shared ride, and mistaken arrest, and you've covered basically every single deck in the game. <clears throat> you think I'm joking? I actually am not. Because since every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! now follows the same pattern, every single deck follows the same playstyle, it's now relatively easy to figure out how they're going again this is my hot take here but what i'm what i mean by by saying this is that i've analyzed essentially how things are going moving forward this is potentially where we're going to go it's a strong indicator while yes maybe they may be things that change in the future maybe we may not go there but with the way things are going, we're likely to add, we're likely to have more decks, I think you would agree, that add more. We are likely to have more decks that special summon more. And so this is why I feel these effects are gonna be strong moving forward. Let's go to another point that I wanna mention. And here's where, when we come to this slide here, here's where I have cards to mention, where I feel like these cards are going to be impactful sometime in the future maybe not now but in the future as the advantage race becomes more and more of a thing i think heavy slump is going to be something that we're going to have to consider in the side deck moving forward in a potential future and i i am thinking of getting it early because i think part of the reason why i'm looking at heavy slump right now and looking at it being a car that could help is that the amount of advantage that we are starting to gain in Yu-Gi-Oh! is starting to become insane. We've already passed the tipping point, and if decks are going to start becoming similar like Snake Eyes, where they're going to just accrue advantage and going to continue on this power creep scaling, then Heavy Slump looks more and more attractive. 
and could also be a potential thing as it could just reduce the hand size of the opponent. Think about heavy slump for a moment going forward into the potential future that we have going uh, into the potential future going forward. Think about the fact that the amount of advantage decks are adding right now is actually getting quite ridiculous. Um, the condition to meet of your opponent controlling eight cards or more in their hand. In in the time before Maltomi Perelia or Fuel Loss didn't really seem to be something that was would happen consistently. But with Fuel Loss existing, I can honestly say Heavy Slump can be quite consistent. I mean, your opponent controlling more than eight cards in their hand is something that is could be happening more and more often going forward. And I definitely feel, strongly feel, that it could be a strong going second card and something to be added in the side deck potentially maybe not now but in a but in a near potential future it is looking way more likely that heavy slump is going to be potentially great another card i look at is balance of judgment if your opponent controls more cards and the the combined number of cards in your hand and that you control draw cards equal to the difference or the surplus i look at balance of judgment i look at what um snake eyes is doing now i think about the potential future that we're heading into and balance of judgment looks more appealing moving forward obviously right now it doesn't really we i would say it is complete garbage but that is not necessarily the case think to yourself of a potential future where decks can actually make so much advantage going forward this is a reality this is something that is happening more and more often and i think a card like balance of judgment shouldn't now be considered some trash it should actually be considered a possibility of happening this is the worst case scenarios think to yourself if your opponent made a full board and you were to activate uh, thrust into balance of judgment again another card that you, you see that i keep talking about is triple tactics thrust i do have a feeling that thrust may get hit in the future i don't know why but it just feels like thrust seems to be the solution to a lot of things uh does your opponent have a really scary board or scary hand they're gonna accrue we can go into um turn skip with different dimension ground are they going to just add themselves loads of pluses? Heavy slump. Are they going to have a bigger board than me? And is that going to be an inevitability? Balance of judgment. Now, a card that I see myself being niche and going into, going into synchro decks going forward is their, the primal being. This is a card that I see going into synchro decks going forward. Decks like the the new Apo Kandris deck, I believe, coming in out in the late in the year. Decks that just use loads of level ten or higher monsters on their field quite easily. Now I don't see Thea again being a staple going forward. I see it as very exclusive to synchro uh, decks that can pump out 12s or 11s quite easily. So decks such as Centurion and the like, maybe White Forest, that really like to use those level 10 or higher monsters, right? It's, it's just a free summon. For example, uh, let's say in a Centurion build, if you were to place Thayer in there, you could be able to do all your plays, make a spare Synchro 12, your opponent does their thing. You then... On your opponent's turn, you would then tribute one of your level 12 or higher that you don't need and just get that this card out there. So you'd have a, a Red Nova there, a Cosmic Blazer, and a Thea, and a Thea the Primal Being, which could be potentially quite, quite scary and uh, in, a, in this potential future. So how do I see Yu-Gi-Oh going forward? Well, as I've said in this video with uh, this autumn season, I see when it comes to dealing with fuel loss, triple tactics thrust into different dimension ground is just a turn skip. It's just so easy to do. 
so easy to facilitate. It avoids everything that Malchami Fiolos or any Malchami card will do at the moment. It's all the greatest upsides for the player going second and all, and it can't be countered or anything. You can't ash this, you can't uh, draw the, this uh, strategy. It's just absolutely fantastic. Now, as I've also said, the other, st the other card I'm looking at that I really like is Kurikara Divine Carnet. As I said before, we're going to be, with the potential futures that I see moving forward in Yu-Gi-Oh, spamming cards, being able to just make silly boards is going to be the norm and not the exception. Which is why I am preparing and looking at cards that do more than um, Nibiru. While Nibiru is great, Nibiru to me is going to not be great moving forward for the simple reason that it tributes all your cards. Well, it's great, yes, that it breaks the board, but part of the issue of Nibiru in my eyes is that moving forward, especially when we're going to be having loads of uh, the power ceiling is going to increase higher and higher and higher, is it's not really going to help as it clears your own field as well. So you are not really going to be able to make that comeback. However, with Kurikara, you can use it on your turn, obviously, but you get to break the opponent's board, first of all, with it. At the bare minimum, you get a beta card because it's a must, it's a card that must be negated. Okay. And it's a looming threat whenever your turn comes about because when it resolves, you get a resource. You get a free negate from your opponent. I need to repeat that. You get a free negate or free disruption from your opponent. Not only that, okay, it gets to be a fat 3,000 attack points minimum. Okay, 3,000 attack points is not a joke. And if they have a big ass board there, then the board, then it can actually go over 9,000 and become an OTK monster in itself. Do not underestimate, Kur the potential for Kurikara is extremely huge, okay? This is not a card to be messing with. The other th uh, cards that I feel I would talk about as well is the Dominus cards. Now, the Dominus cards to me, again, are fantastic cards moving forward. One of the reasons why I'm attracted to them so much is that this is the first time outside of Imperm that we have normal traps that are just good traps to play in general. And they have just really good effects that are going to age like fine wine. One of those is Purge. Purge is the, one of the first effects of Ash Blossom. This is a card that's going to age like fine wine. Obviously, right now, no one is playing it because no one uh, really thinks that the card is good. But this is, this, is a, this is a misconception that players don't understand. Every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to add a card. This goes without fail. The effect of Purge is always, in every format, going to be live. It doesn't matter what deck, it doesn't matter what strategy is made in the future, Purge is always going to be good. Same thing with Impulse. That's why I'll say, moving forward, get yourself these cards when you can. In fact, I would say, don't even get Fuel Loss. I would say, get yourselves the Kurikara, Purge, and Impulse. I would also say, get yourself Shared Ride, Mistaken Arrest, and Dimensional Barrier. The reason why I mentioned those six cards in particular, as I feel where Yu-Gi-Oh! is heading right now, is that these are cards that are going to be staples for what decks do in the future. These are things that are never going to change. Every deck is going to be, is going to be adding cards from their deck. So Shared Ride is always going to be good. Every card is going, every deck is going to be adding way too many cards or advantage. So, Mistaken Arrest is going to be good. Every single deck is going to be, uh, you know, part, using part of the extra deck, whether it be Rituals, uh, you know, Ritual, Synchro, XYZ, Fusion, ETC. So, D Barrier is always going to be good. The point that I'm trying to make is. The cards that I've mentioned here, no matter what happens in my eyes, I feel they will always be relevant now because 
the power creep that we've hit is here to stay. The other cards that I've mentioned, whether it be Heavy Slump or Balance of Judgment, I feel are the worst case scenarios of where Yu-Gi-Oh may be heading to and should definitely be acquired while they're cheap now for that potential future. Prepare for the future, prepare for World War Three or World War Four, whatever sort of disaster scenario we're going to be entering. Because while Heavy Slump and Balance of Judgment right now don't look like good cards, make no mistake, the advantage of where of Yu-Gi-Oh and how it is heading, those cards are going to be good cards in the future. This isn't this isn't like Doom saying it's just inevitable. If our power creep keeps increasing with the way it's going, it's going to we, these cards are pretend are just going to be good cards moving forward. That's why I would say keep my eye on them and get them early while they're cheap now. In fact, I've got myself balance of judgment, and I think in the near future I will get myself the heavy slump. Now, Kea I see as a card that has potential to be broken, but until unless Konami starts printing more archetypes that that special summon level 10 or higher and those become mainstream, then Thea really is going to be a niche card and will remain a niche card for synchro decks and, few, and level, high, level 10 or higher fusion decks in the future. And that's all I've got to say in this video. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. 